But there were some kind of new specifics that the Surgeon General mentioned, particularly around uh, who is most impacted. It was the most vulnerable kids, the ones who are being cyberbullied, the ones who might have body issues. And he also said that two in five kids between the age of eight and 12 are on social media. I want to start on the harms first that he, he pointed out. We've talked about this a lot. At what point does the chatter around the harms, does the chatter about potential legislation actually lead to some moves from Congress here in the U.S. to do something about these concerns that Vivek Murthy is mentioning? Well, it's a great question, and I think part of the thing about social media, like any technology, is hopefully it's used predominantly for good, but there's always going to be cases where it gets abused, and we're all concerned about um, teen mental health, kids' mental health. And I agreed, frankly, with a lot of the aspects of the Surgeon General uh, Surgeon General report. And I think you'd find a lot of agreement within industry. We do have a teen mental health crisis. Um, no, ki no kid or teen should be on sp spending three plus hours a day on social media. That was in the report. The report included a lot of good tips for parents around promoting, you know, um, a moderate use of, of services, social media, tech-free zones in the home. But I also think it acknowledged that social media has played a positive role in many teens' lives. It's helped them stay connected during COVID. Uh, it helps bullied and marginalized teens who may not teens who may not come uh, from supportive families. And I think many companies agree with the report's point that they have a responsibility here too. They've many of those companies have been taking steps to design their services in age-appropriate ways. The last thing I'd say too is the report called for more research. And one of the interesting things is, in terms of actual congressional action, is Congress actually passed a law earlier this year called the Camera Act that actually gives uh, money to the National Institutes of Health to do much more research. The, the report today from the Surgeon General said most of the research on this question has really been about correlation and not really delved into causation. And I think that, you know, we need really no more research to, to dig at that question. And Adam, in your role as CEO of the Chamber of Progress, I know that you interact with a lot of different executives across these companies. I do think we're in an interesting moment for the social media industry, given the cost cutting, the reprioritization on revenue growth. Just today, Meta is going through another round of layoffs, and we know a lot of those layoffs have hit um, some of these more ancillary things like research that don't play right into the top line. In this moment in time, with these additional calls from the Surgeon General, do you think that these companies are resourcing enough against making sure that they're doing their part to protect from some of these harms that are being raised? Well, it's a concern. I think I would have liked to, seen, to have seen, for example, more acknowledgement in the report of what the companies have done. Um, so, for example, I think in the last two years, you've seen uh, Instagram, you know, introduce things like daily time limits and default private accounts for young teens and more parental supervision tools on Instagram, recognizing that a young teen, a 13-year-old, is different from an older teen. Um, Google's done a lot. And yeah, I think things like layoffs could definitely have an impact, not just from the perspective of product um, design and having people to think it, think through these things. But research, as you said, content moderation. Content moderation is really important for teens having positive experiences. Um, you, you, you know, all the platforms want to make sure, for example, that a kid, a teenager looking for information about, say, suicide, suicidal ideation, isn't shown, um, you know, how-to videos mm -hmm. and things like that. That takes content moderation. But I also think to, to give medicine credit here, they were doing quite a bit of research on this. And I think, unfortunately, one of the things that happened out of the Francis Haugen revelations is that some of, I think the company was um, criticized and maybe even penalized a little bit for, for doing that kind of research. I hate to see companies discouraged from looking themselves in the mirror because I think that that kind of self-reflection leads to these kind of improvements. I guess the criticism was because they were doing the research but not sharing it in the same way that tobacco companies did their own research but didn't share any of that with the public. I'm curious about uh, how these companies might enforce uh, some of the limitations that they put on young users through age verification. How do other industries enforce age restrictions in limiting online engagement without endangering user privacy? For instance, how does the pornography industry or the gambling industry do this? Well, frankly, I think we're seeing this play out in real time. So one of the things the report talked about, for example, is that a good number of 8 to 12-year-olds are on social media because their parents have encouraged and enabled them to lie about their age, right? Mm -hmm. And when I and, and then strangely, the report then went on to sort of say, well, we, we need tougher age limits. But I think the more honest approach is to recognize that if parents are encouraging their kids, their preteen kids to lie about their age, we might be due for a rethink of that law, right? But I do think when it comes to age verification, 
We have, there's a proposal in Congress right now. There are laws that have been passed this year already by Utah and Arkansas, there's others pending in other states that would require parents to uh, basically, you know, authorize their kids on social media in terms of age verification. And I think one of the real questions is how do you do that in a way that doesn't violate their privacy in the name of their security? But also, frankly, a lot of kids are coming from families where they don't have supportive parents yeah. for whom, you know, maybe social media might be a little bit, a bit of a refuge. So I think a lot of these, the, the, the concern for kids and teens is very well intentioned but I don't know that there's enough grappling with some of the unintended consequences of some of the policy proposals that have been put forward. Yeah, and these are things that are going to take years to play out, especially if there's a lot of research uh, that needs to be done on the long-term effects of this exposure to social media. Adam, really appreciate it. Adam Kavakovich is so uh, the founder and CEO of Chamber of Progress.